Hello and welcome. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be looking at operating systems. This is Chapter 2, Part 1 of our A-plus uh, computer repair series. Objectives. We're going to learn various operating systems. DOS, uh, all the way to Windows 7. Also Linux, uh, Mac OS, uh, Unix. We're going to be looking at quite a few. Uh, learn how uh, uh, OS interfaces with the world. How does it interface with the user and how does it interface with the hardware? Learn a few OS tools that you're going to need to use to maintain the system. You're going to find that the OS uh, is probably 99% of the problems that we as technicians have to solve. The hardware is pretty reliable today except for the hard drive and the power supply. Hard drives, again, mechanical. They heat up. Uh, they have a tendency to fail. But the software, uh, software is a problem all the time. Windows has a tendency to degrade uh, very quickly. And we'll be talking about how to maintain it. Introduction. Uh, a computer comprises both hardware and software. The hardware, it's physical. That's what we can see and touch. Uh, the software, though, this is uh, the controlling instructions. Uh, we can't see it. It's in the form of um, instructions that reside on the hard drive. Computer technicians, we need to master both. Again, the software is something we really are going to focus on. Chapter 1 provided an overview of the hardware. Chapter 2 introduces the critical system software. OS past and present. What an operating system OS does. It manages the hardware. It runs applications. It provides an interface for the users. The users use the OS to uh, manipulate or work the hardware. Retrieves and manipulates files. The OS is like a middleman. It resides between the user and the hardware. It takes instructions from the user and then implements those instructions on the hardware. The computer needs only one operating system. Here's a diagram of a user up at the top here and uh, she's operating an, an application, Microsoft Word. She has the operating system that is driving all the hardware down here. Uh, DOS, Disk Operating System. This is the first OS used by IBM computers way back in the 80s. Where, where DOS can still be found. Specialized systems using older applications. You won't see it very often, but you might find an application that somebody just doesn't want to upgrade and it works well, so they might still use a DOS system. Uh, troubleshooting disks and CDs. I use DOS every day for maintaining Windows. So I create troubleshooting disks or recovery disks that use DOS uh, to control uh, maybe the re-imaging of a Windows uh, XP system. do this in my lab. I've got 35 computers and I use DOS to maintain them. Windows uh, 9X ME uses DOS in the underlying OS. When we went to XP in 2000 or the NT systems, DOS is only emulated. It's actually not actually part of the operating system anymore. Here's another diagram. Uh, showing a user up here with the graphical user interface and then DOS as one of the underlying uh, programs of this uh, DOS, uh, DOS system. Uh, Windows 9X ME combines the DOS core with the graphical user interface designed to bridge legacy or older and newer technologies. Backward compatible with older systems. Able to accommodate new technologies. Here you can see a bridge. I've got the older DOS systems bridging with the newer NT systems. The Windows uh, 9X ME causing you utilizing that bridge or creating that bridge. Windows NT. NT stands for New Technology. Windows NT, we end up with a desktop version and a server version. Best known features uh, for the new OS core replacing DOS. DOS is no longer a part of the operating system. Avoid installing Windows NT. Windows NT uh, created a lot of problems for the industry. We installed Windows NT server, couldn't keep it running for more than 10 minutes. We suffered that for almost six months before they came out with an upgraded version. Uh, we came out with 3.5, it would run for about an hour. It wasn't until we, they came up with version 4, which was over a year later, that we could run it all day long. And still we were having problems. So not recommended to use. Windows 2000, great upgrade. Upgraded both NT on the desktop and the server. Improvements over Windows NT, more stable environment. Support for plug and play. 
We didn't have that before. When we installed new hardware, uh, we had to do the configuration ourselves. Today, when you install new hardware on the computer, it automatically discovers it and configures it and starts using it. Device Manager, Recovery Console, Active, Active Directory. Well, these are some new things that were added. Uh, better network support. That was very important for the, for the, for the technicians. Features, uh, specifically targeting notebook computers. So notebook computers were added with Windows NT 2000. Windows XP, two main versions, the Home Edition and the Professional. Noteworthy uh, new features. <coughs> Allows two users to log on and open applications. So you can have more than one user operating it. Incorporates both Windows Messenger and Media Player adds advanced security such as Windows Firewall. That was something that we had been waiting quite a long time for. Windows XP first came out, didn't have it, but it was introduced with Service Pack 2. The hardware requirements, 64 megabytes of RAM, uh, we need at least 500 megs today. One gig is best. Uh, 1.5 gig gigabytes of free hard disk space, probably need at least 10 gigabytes, 20 is better. Uh, CPUs probably need at least one gig on the CPU to run this efficiently. Here's the desktop. Uh, huge improvement over Windows 98 and ME. Windows Vista, Windows 7. Uh, Vista is something that we're bypassing. We're going to go to Windows uh, 7. Uh, Windows Vista has seemed to be fairly sluggish, incompatible with a lot of uh, applications, a lot of hardware, required all new drivers. Windows 7 has just come out, and uh, we're anxious to see how it's going to perform. seems to be a little bit better. seems to perform a little bit faster. Uh, the only problem we're going to have is coming up with some drivers for all the different hardware and software that we're going to be using with it. It usually takes Microsoft about a year or two to get all the bugs worked out and get the drivers ready. So Windows 7 is something we're going to probably hold off on. We'll be looking at it, but XP will be our primary operating system for the next year or two because I don't like to get involved with uh, Microsoft's new products and become their beta testers, reporting the problems and bugs. I just don't have enough time trying to maintain what we have. Uh, noteworthy new features, new graphic interface, revamped engine, uh, new interface uh, between it and the applications. Windows Server 2003-2008 refers to a suite of Microsoft operating systems. We got business versions, we got storage, we've got web, standard, enterprise, and data center. They came out with a lot of different flavors, a lot of different versions. Not designed for the use on the PC. XP is our primary operating system for XP or for the for the uh, PC. Review. OS acts like a middleman. A real important concept to understand. We need an OS for the user to be able to manipulate or run the hardware. It becomes the middleman between the user and the hardware. Windows 9, 9X, 95, 98, ME. That had DOS as part of it. Windows NT removed the DOS. We have new technology. Actually, a brand new operating system. Had a lot of problems with it. it took a while for it to become mature not until Windows NT 4 came out. Windows Vista, uh, Windows 7. Vista is kind of uh, an operating system that we're not utilizing, but hopefully Windows 7 will be our new our new operating system. Take probably uh, two to three years before it becomes the standard, like Windows XP is now. Activities. I want you to explain why you might use DOS and where you might find it. Primarily, it's going to be used for maintenance, troubleshooting, once you do some research, you'll find that free DOS is available too. But do some research and find out where DOS can be used and why. Explain why you might stay with Windows XP instead of moving to Windows 7 or Windows Vista. I also have a couple of labs. Labs 2.1, Files and Directories. Organizing your hard drive. I can introduce you to what files and directories are and how to better order, order or uh, organize your, your files on your hard drive. There are some review questions at the end. I want you to do them and turn them in. Lab 2.2, converting number systems. I'm going to introduce you to the hexadecimal numbering system. You've already been working a little bit with decimals and um, the binary system, base 2. Now we're going to introduce a base 16 numbering system, hexadecimal. Do some conversions back and forth. There are some review questions. Again, I want you to answer and turn in. That's it uh, for two, chapter 2, part 1 
uh, again in the A plus uh, computer repair series. The next will be chapter two, part two. Thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.